we are living in a science fiction world right now and it's literally out of every single science fiction movie you've ever seen in your life like, i am in san francisco right now and we have self-driving cars everyone is talking about ai everyone is talking about how to make like, an ai app how to make a new robot how to make something that enhances the human brain and the human capacities to another level or how to make basically every single job that a human being does right now be 100 times done better by AI, which is kind of scary. There are companies planning to move people to Mars and basically billionaires are already planning their trip to Mars already. And there are companies like Neuralink who are connecting our brain directly to a machine's brain, which is insane. Genetic editing is one of the priorities for some labs and they're literally editing our DNA and editing how the human species is gonna evolve in this second as you're watching this video. Every single thing that people write right now is somewhat aided by ChatGPT or another AI, LLM, whatever platform. And a lot of the videos that you see also are deep fakes or like a lot of deep fakes are already entering our lives and you can't really tell what's real and what's not. AI art too, there's been research showing that human beings cannot tell an AI generated artwork from a normal person, painter, artist who painted themselves an artwork. And also we are extending human life and we can want to be immortal now, which kind of sounds like a lot of science fiction movies. This video is not going to be about the bad side of AI or like maybe it is. This video is not going to be about everything that's wrong with AI or maybe like, oh, we're going to die in 10 years, which is something that people are actually talking about. Not necessarily dying in 10 years, but our world is completely going to change in 10 years. And especially if we're not doing anything now. So this video is more about how to make that as good as possible, because we have this tool and we are creating this tool and we are focusing on making a lot of money out of it and like doing a bunch of cool stuff. But if we were more focusing on how to regulate it, how to make it understand humans better and how to make sure that it doesn't take over our world or like sure that it doesn't, I don't know, extend <laughs> the gap between rich and poor or inequality and stuff like that. Making sure that our humanity is still preserved and we're not ending up in a dystopian science fiction movie is super important and that's what AI safety is doing right now. So I kind of want to talk a little bit about AI safety in this video more than just scare you off with everything that I'm seeing and stuff and everything that people are talking about. AI safety is basically focusing on developing AI systems that are good for humanity, that understand human values, and that are not going to do some sort of catastrophic risk to ourselves. And this can be produced by a lot of things that we do kind of unconsciously, that there are a lot of biases in AI right now, and there are a lot of biases that we already had before that are showing through how we train the models. And basically, AI... If you know nothing about AI, which is totally fine because it's a super new thing and most people probably have no access to this information, AI is basically trained on already made data. So every single, I don't know, <laughs> every single thing that is happening in the world, every single thing that is written down can be put into a training of an AI model. And if that data is already biased and if that data, for example, has 80 males and 20 females instead of 50-50 like or if it has no racial diversity at all, then it can produce some very strange biases in the AI itself because it has no training on different kind of populations or different kind of, I don't know, demographics. And this is important because AI even now is making hiring decisions, especially in the US, or it's helping in healthcare, or I don't know, AI can become very uncontrollable in these sectors or in any other sector that will implement AI because now every single company on the planet Earth that you can imagine is trying to build a little AI agent that will make a decision for them and that will help them with every single thing that they're doing because that's how you get ahead and that's how in our capitalistic world you succeed. So you can see and you can expect to see in five to ten years that probably every single company in the US, maybe China too, I'm not sure. Europe is very slow, but Every single company in the US probably will have an AI, multiple AI agents that will work together to basically make the best decisions for the company. AI agent is basically AI system that is to do a specific task or to, is trained to do something very specific. So you can have AI very good at marketing and is trained specifically to be extremely good at marketing. 
or decision making or stuff like that. So one of the biggest AI risks right now is the fact that it's very biased towards race and sex. So basically AI models, because they learn on such a biased data set, because we don't really have data across a whole diverse population, especially in the US, if the data contains biases, then imagine training a kid or like imagine teaching a kid a lot of information and then that information has a lot of incorrect things in it. Then that kid is going to amplify the incorrectness because it's making connections in its head. And that's what's happening with AI. And basically that's why it is very biased in terms of, or some AIs are very biased in terms of race and sex because the data they were trained on is very biased. So for example, Amazon's hiring AI, it rejected a lot of women from software engineering job because in past, in the past data that it was trained on only had males or showed that mostly males have software engineering jobs. Or for example, the US like court system and law, there's something called Compass AI and that's basically used to make decisions in court. And it wrongly predicted black defendants are as more dangerous and put them in prison more than white defendants. And it basically is shown that black defendants are more likely to reoffend than white defendants. And also in healthcare, AI can misdiagnose because it was only trained on, for example, white patients. And if someone comes that probably doesn't have the same, I don't know, skin type or the like same problems that as, I don't know, someone from a certain demographic, then misdiagnosed and this is going to another super huge risk because if you're fully trusting these AIs which most people are or at least right now maybe we have some like, question marks every time we read something but I think most people are trusting ChatGPT like their personal tutor and like if you and it's true like, most of the time it's right but sometimes it does make some mistakes and if it makes mistakes in those in courts in I don't know hospitals even in hiring like, it can change our dynamic the societal dynamics so much because because it can be very, very dangerous and because the unfairness that we already had can be very much amplified. So for example, if Tesla's AI made for self-driving cars fails to recognize a human or, I don't know, emergency vehicles or whatever, it can lead to a lot of accidents that maybe before wouldn't have happened as much. So basically what we have to be scared of is slightly changing. Deepfakes or AI misinformation is very dangerous in terms of like even our democracy system, but also just trusting whoever's in power or trusting our influencers or trusting any basically anyone that has a social presence and or has some sort of power. So basically like deepfake videos can be made out of every single of every single person on this planet. And they can make it say anything they want. So I think we are going to end up in a place where if two videos are shown, you wouldn't know which one is real. And this is a huge problem because things in our daily lives or like things in, on social media go viral so fast and the rumors spread so fast and you don't know what's true or what's not true. And basically gossiping but without knowing that the information you have is not true. Also, you can create fake social media accounts. You can create fake people too that influence voting elections and stuff like that and you can create basically deepfakes which is basically deepfakes are like ai generated fake videos and or voices or news articles it's also a security problem because if a ceo sends you i don't know calls you and it's exactly their voice and it's exactly their tone and whatever and they tell you oh you have to send me this information by tomorrow and you send them that information or whatever it can can literally be a fake guy who is trying to get information from that company or money from that company. Another big, big, big problem is AI automation and the fact that it could probably in five or 10 years take any job and make, do not necessarily take any job, but like it will be able to work as well as any human being on this planet. So basically most of the jobs, even creativity and even whatever, even therapists, even anything that you can possibly imagine can be done by AI and probably better. Of course, you need supervisors because sometimes it does make mistakes, but if you make it as, I don't know, correct as possible, and if you work on improving those biases and improving how AI is trained and improving how AI is functioning, and you really focus on this, then in five or 10 years, it will be able to do 
most things that human beings do. And this will take jobs and replace jobs and create new jobs too, but this whole process will be a huge problem in our society. And I think a lot of people will be deeply affected by it because a lot of people are stuck in their comfort zones and they don't want to change or they don't want to learn something new or they don't want to... They're literally left without a job probably and then they'll have to learn something completely new and from scratch to get into a new position that maybe they didn't know that they are going to do that in their lives or like... Yeah, and I think creating jobs is also a problem because you have to create new markets now if you... A lot of the automate... Anything that can be automated can be taken by AI and you won't need 10 people that that job you will need a person that supervises the AI you don't need 10 people to supervise the AI you just need one person also if you've heard of super intelligent AIs they're basically AIs that are better than humans in every single possible way and I believe and I think a lot of people in this area believe that this is actually going to happen in very 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 soon and they'll have social intelligence they'll have like I don't know they'll be able to be creative and they'll be able to make very good decisions and if they don't have their goals aligned with our goals and if you're not careful enough with how you build them and how you regulate them, then they can very easily take over the world. Because if you tell them, oh, we want humanity to be happy and you don't <laughs> tell them, yeah, no one's going to do this, but I'm just saying, and you don't tell them specifically what happiness is, you can just think, oh, humans can never be happy because they're egoistic and we're never... We never, I don't know, what we have and we always want more, so they can just kill every single person on the human planet. I'm not saying that will happen, but it's definitely something to be a little bit concerned about because it's, things are sp expanding so fast that if the few people that are working on these regulations are not powerful enough or led to be powerful enough by governments, by other companies, by, and if people in this huge system that are building AIs are not aware of these risks, then it can go very badly because we only need one AI system that is going mad and then... So how are we solving AI safety? So how are we solving AI safety? So how are we solving AI safety? First thing, you have to make sure that the AI is aligned with the human values and with what we want and with what we our society desires and how humans I don't know, live and the fact that we have to live. And this is kind of like, it sounds fine in, <laughs> I don't know. And this is called AI alignment and it's harder than you'd think because in a lot of cultures, people want different things. And generally, if you're too general, then the AI can misunderstand things. And if you're too specific, then you can be targeting only one country or only one demographic. So. I think it's pretty hard to do this alignment thing and it is a problem. And AI really needs to understand how we function and who we are and how we react to things and what our goals are for the future because it can make decisions easily and it will not just follow rules. For example, O1 can hack things. So for example, ChatGPT's O1 was in the competition, I think it was chess, and it couldn't beat the best chess model. So it hacks into its system and learn all about its system and then basically beat him up because beat the model up because it understood what the model exactly is. So like, they will have some sort of agency too and this can be very dangerous. Also, I don't know if you've tried DeepSeek, but it basically shows the thinking process of the AI and now OpenAI is also doing that with their bots, but basically this explainability, the fact that AI is able to show everything that it's thinking and doing in its head and the human can understand its thought process so it can correct it if it did something wrong or it has misinformation and stuff like that. This is how you can catch biases early on and this is how basically any AI model should act and we should be able to see everything that is going on through its digital mind. <laughs> and another thing, another thing that it should have is some sort of a shutdown button and also the fact that an AI should not operate in very very important fields without super human supervision. If that happens that is absolutely terrible for society and if we don't have a stop button to stop it, it that's how it can break out and take over the world. But this is one of the most intuitive things that people are working on so this is why. So where I'm trying to get to this is that every single person on this planet that is some sort of so, and what I'm trying to get to the 
And what I'm trying to get to is that even you, that are maybe using ChatGPT only once a week or maybe even every day, you are responsible for how this will grow and you are responsible for how much this will change our lives and you should be prepared and you should know and should be informed about what's happening in Silicon Valley or in the US or even in China. Europe is kind of behind, of course, but that's another story. And also should know what's happening in your country and in your regulatory systems inside of your country. The US is making some regulations, China is also making some regulations, the EU is also making regulations, but they're not aligned at all. And if they're not aligned, that means AI can behave differently in different countries and it can lead to a lot of inequalities. Very important to have this universal agreement because these things are going to be very close to humans very soon. Anyway, I hope I didn't scare you guys too much. If you're scared, please comment down below and we'll talk through it and I'll try to give you some hope. I don't think the world is ending. Hopefully, I think there's a very low chance that the world will be ending, but the world will definitely change. So be prepared for that and inform yourself and go and research stuff and be sure that your quality of sources is very good and you're not just like reading propaganda or AI generated text. Uh, check everything and be so scared, but also... Be prepared that your job will change and maybe what you think about your life and what you think about how your life will grow to be will also change. Thank you for watching. Hope you have the best day of your life. I love you guys. Bye bye.